the indian education system has a very peculiar tapering phenomena the number of graduates gets reduced when we look for the numbers for the higher education if we further filter down to the students who take up science and technology research the number is still lower if we add the gender bias to it then you would be surprised to see that the number of women entering into science and technology is further reduced the number of women scientists known women scientists are quite less for example there is asima chatterjee who was the first uh, phd holder from uh, indian university and other is um, anna mani she was a meteorologist anandi bai gopal though she was not a scientist but she is a physician first female uh, doctor pertaining to my field from the field of botany uh, a very famous cytogeneticist was uh, janaki ammal who is the first indian lady to probably have studied cytogenetics one is uh, kalpana chavla she was the she was one of the indians who actually reached the space and survived there for uh, many years days even uh, we had a couple of other women scientists too but uh, i am not remembering them at the moment as you could see even after giving out hints about the mangalyaan mission or the covid vaccine research or even nasa we could not actually get the girls to talk about the prominent women scientists of india if that is the case in the present day scenario can you imagine what it could be for women to pursue research in the pre independence era we are talking about a british raj before 1947 where even graduation was supposed to be a biggest achievement in the lifespan of a girl child once such ansang shiro in science is dr kamla bhagwat sohan first doctorate conferred by cambridge university but has also contributed to the research in india for indians in a prophetic manner kamla was born to the parents lakshmi bai and narayan rao bhagwat who himself was a proud recipient of gold medal at the prestigious Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore he was working in the area of organic chemistry and had nurtured both his daughters the elder one durga and the younger one kamla to follow their own paths kamla was born in a very educated family her father being a keen researcher of organic chemistry at the indian institute of science bangalore and her sister durga bhagwat known to the entire maharashtra eminent in the field she thought that kamala will continue her studies further and that prompted kamala to join the saint xavier's college in mumbai she pursued science and completed her bsc in science in flying colors in fact she stood first class first and was the recipient of satyavati samaldas prize of the bombay university when she applied for her admissions to indian institute of science uh, actually because her father and her uncle both were the first batch of uh, uh, students and uh, phd's from indian institute of science and when she applied the bhagwat family and kamla herself were shocked and surprised to discover that she has been rejected and the reason given by the then uh, very famous scientist sir c v raman who is also a nobel laureate we all know him was that he did not believe that women could make good scientists now you can imagine for a determined passionate girl like kamla what a shock this must have been but her nature was such that she wouldn't give up easily 
सो शी परसिस्टेड परसर्वियर्ड एंड शी लिटरली स्टेज द धरना अ सत्याग्रह आउटसाइड द डायरेक्टर्स ऑफिस इन द इंडियन इंस्टिट्यूट ऑफ साइंस शी रिलेंटलेसली एंड केप्ट ऑन यू नो डूइंग हर धरना टिल फाइनली द डायरेक्टर सर सी वी रामन हैड टू एक्सेप्ट एंड रिलेंट एंड गिव हर एडमिशन दिस शुड हैव मेड हर वेरी हैप्पी बट देर वॉज अ लिटल कैवियट वेन शी वॉज गिवन द एडमिशन देर शी वॉज नॉट एडमिटेड एज अ रेग्युलर स्टूडेंट she was admitted on probation and she was told that for one year director will look at how she performs will judge her on the basis of her sincerity ability to perform her hard work and then decide whether she can be admitted as a regular student this was not enough there was another uh, reason given uh, another clause that was put in her admission was that while she worked she would have to ensure that no other male students got disturbed in any possible way while she was at iisc and while she was working in the lab just imagine how insulting and disappointing it must have been to young kamla in iisc while she was studying for msc she found a guru who left a very lifelong impression on her dr Shri Nivasaya of the Department of Biochemistry was a remarkable scientist. He was pioneering microbiologist in India. As a teacher, he was very caring of his student, but at the same time very demanding. Kamla worked very hard in his lab again in the field of nutritional biochemistry, published good papers in a journals of good repute. What is more important is looking at the way Kamla worked. Dr C V Raman then never stopped any woman from entering IISC in fact he allowed few girl students to work in his own laboratory which then excelled later on in their own discipline she then decided to join hopkins institute of science in mumbai and continued her research work further soon she was invited to cambridge university in the uk and she decided to work under direct rector and she was going to work on neurotransmitters and enzymes she continued her work for a while and then she was invited and she received another wonderful fellowship which is called as the springer research fellowship and through this fellowship she got the opportunity to work with robert hill the nobel laureate and she pursued her experiments in photosynthesis and was working on plants highly interested in the field of biochemistry in the field of nutrition and also in the field wherein she could work on vitamins kamla went on working till such time that another scientist frederick hopkin he invited her and she became his student to continue her phd kamla worked on respiration in plants and that made her obtain the degree in phd and her work on plants and on cytochromes has got awards and many laurels and all over the world her work has been recognized and kamla probably was the first phd a lady phd from this area it is quite obvious that amazing opportunities awaited her in the uk the kind of research infrastructure that was available there as compared to what was available in pre independence india but when the motherland calls nothing can stop a patriot influenced by the mahatma and swayed by the anti colonial sentiment and the freedom struggle she left cambridge and returned to india the gandhian principles that she had embraced reflected throughout her life in india she served a brief stint in mumbai municipality and uh, following this she joined the nutrition research laboratory in kunur uh, the most important is all her research was context specific she focused on locally available foods for the benefit of the population uh, so the first among that is uh, she studied the protein content of locally available foods 
and uh, to give an example uh, she studied bombay duck uh, which is the commonly consumed food a uh, fish in in uh, by the mumbai population and double beans uh, these are low cost protein rich foods uh, which was studied by dr kamla and this was communicated for the population to meet their protein requirements at a very low cost now continuing with the uh, proteins she studied uh, the inhibitors which are present in food which interfere with protein absorption availability and digestion so she specifically worked on trypsin inhibitors and thymines which interfered with protein utilization amongst a population which was energy and protein malnourished now the third the most important in her research is the nira research she studied the nutritive value of nira and the interest in uh, nira research was uh, fueled by none other than uh, dr rajinder prasad who was the first president of free india uh, she studied the micronutrient content of uh, nira uh, which is the palm syrup and uh, the beauty of her finding is that she did not just leave with uh, studying the vitamin content and uh, although she communicated that uh, vitamin c was rich in palm palm syrup uh, what was interesting in her observation is that the presence of sulfhydryl group in the palm syrup uh, prevented oxidation of vitamin c uh, which was made available to the um, uh, population when they consume even after the time that is lost after collection uh, to the point of consumption so um that was a very important contribution and uh, in continuation with that she worked on um, a palm gur or the molasses where uh, the work which was done by her and her students uh, benefited the tribal population specifically the pregnant women uh, the lactating mothers and children under 5 years it is often observed that scientists who are deep into their research are mostly following a very bookish regime kamla for that matter was an exception in multiple ways tar tamilla kaga ushir ka jala matla ho majhe mr phart kamla bhai asked me why are you late i told her my husband is short tempered he has got cardiac problems the doctor has asked him to avoid oily and spicy foods but he doesn't like the food without oil and spices kamla bai gave me tips and tricks to make the food tasty without adding oil and spices i actually knew these tips since my childhood but i got to know the science and nutrition behind it from kamla bai we usually discussed family and personal things and she always gave me a lot of tips for it kamla was one exception who has not only authored books on recipes or arts however the one thing which strikes me the most is her passion for sports uh, a multifaceted personality dr kamla sohni had mastered the art of weaving embroidery cooking as well as sports uh, throughout her career she was very much passionate about tennis and she used to play tennis every evening even though she was under the research she was working very hard for the research tennis is also her passion along with science post retirement for the next two decades she served in the consumer guidance society of india which she was a founder member and later served as a chairperson she designed a kit which women could use in the kitchen to test the purity of the food ingredients they buy from the market that is to check whether there is any adulteration life of dr kamla bhagwat leaves us with more questions than answers is it fair that we don't even recognize their efforts or recognize them in a very meager fashion by conferring couple of awards 
or giving away scholarships in their names in my opinion their lives should be celebrated in a way that more and more women get a chance to explore themselves and exhibit their research in stem or the science field by which we can celebrate the leelawati's daughters as it has been mentioned in multiple books the country expressed gratitude by conferring upon her the rashtrapati award that made even direct rister say proud of her for creating history ani tema ma kay jhalo durga bai wished that durga bai should accompany her to the award function at delhi but durga bai could not go with her for some reason government so so work khup hota tar kya sudha 82 83 version cha hota kamala bhai unfortunately during the award function kamla bai expired due to heart failure jeev gela tancha jeet heart failing chalu to tancha ani mag durga bai suggested kamla bai son to get her back to mumbai for the rituals she herself went to the airport to receive them and was waiting for the flight to arrive it was sunset time the flight was slowly landing looking at the sky durga bai felt as if kamla bai had a bond with the universe and so is merged with the heavens above na to jodlo hota te gele ki ata vishwa kade as researchers and academicians in any field we often complain about the lack of resources and the constraints which pose challenges in furthering our research but the time period that dr kamla comes from tells us the struggles that she should have faced in academics and research but this definitely makes us ponder on the loss of energy to overcome such glass ceilings which could have been easily avoided would have permitted perhaps more fruitful research contributions there could have been more kamlas had there been less glass ceilings